Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this pre-built Omen gaming PC that I recently picked up from my local Sam's Club. Now, I was not in the market to pick up a pre-built PC, but with GPU prices and PC part prices and availability being super scarce right now, it's hard to put together a custom gaming PC with a decent GPU right now, so a lot of people are turning to pre-builds, and I really wanted to see if it would be worth picking something like this up. So basically, what we have here is a 10th generation 8-core i7 CPU, a GTX 1660 Super, and 16GB of RAM. All of this came in at $1,049 from my local Sam's Club, and I was pretty surprised when they rang it up because on their website, it's actually listed for $1,199, so around $1,200. But in-store, I was able to pick this up for $1,049. Now, I've looked online to try to find the same price so I could leave some links in the description, but unfortunately, people are pretty much scalping these. I've seen them up to $1,500 with the same configuration. But what I did find was over on Lenovo's official eBay page, they have the Legion 5 with a 3700X, a 1660 Super, and 16 gigabytes of RAM for $1,019. And if I would have sold that one first, that's the one I would have picked up. But I kind of missed out on that one and picked up this Omen, so this is exactly what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. I do like the case here. I mean, it's a little plain Jane for some people, but overall, I think they did the job really well. Up top here, we have some USB ports, our audio in, audio out, and an SD card reader, kind of recessed down here so it's not sticking out of the front. Now, the first thing I always do with these pre-builds is a quick inspection just to make sure there's no unplugged cables, and this one here came in nice and clean. Everything's nice and tight. Now, even though this does come preloaded with 16 gigabytes of RAM, they're only using a single DIMM, and adding a second will definitely help out with performance, but I want to leave this thing stock, at least for this video, so this is exactly how we're going to be testing it. It would be very easy to add more RAM down the road, and if you picked up another 16 gigabyte stick on Amazon or eBay, you could bring this up to 32 gigabytes. But I really wish that these OEM manufacturers would start adding dual channel RAM from the factory. The GPU they're using in here is an OEM variant of a GTX 1660 Super. We don't have a backplate on the top, but we should still get some really good performance out of this thing. They've also opted to use a Cooler Master 500 watt power supply. Now real quick, a couple things that I'm seeing here. Obviously, we only have single channel RAM that will affect performance. But the next thing that I'm looking at is this smaller CPU cooler. This PC is using a 10th Gen i7-10700F, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 2.9 with a boost up to 4.8. It would have been really nice to see a beefier cooler here because, uh, I mean, I got a feeling that under heavy load, we could see some thermal throttling with this system, but we really need to get into testing just to see how it performs. Now, I actually think this case looks pretty good, and they did add a little bit of RGB. They didn't overdo it. I think this is perfect. On the front, we have that Omen logo. And a single RGB strip up top here. All of this can be changed from within software, and I'm glad they kept it to a minimum. It does look really good, especially when that glass side panel is installed. So I need to go ahead and get a lot of stuff installed on this PC. After all, it is a gaming PC, so in this video we're going to be testing out 10 PC games. We'll go with some benchmarks, we'll check the temps on that CPU and GPU, and finally, I'll throw a little bit of emulation at it. Okay, so here we are. I'm all set up. I've installed a bunch of stuff to test out, and I haven't run into any issues just yet, and hopefully we don't. But as you can see, we have that i7-10700F, base clock of 2.9, boost up to 4.8. 16 gigabytes of single-channel RAM running at 2,933 megahertz, and the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super with 6 gigs of VRAM. Now, when it comes to these pre-built systems, especially from bigger manufacturers like Dell, Lenovo, and HP like we have here, there will be a little bit of bloat installed. This does have the HP Update Assistant and McAfee. I uninstalled McAfee. But the other thing that came pre-installed is something I'm definitely going to be keeping, and that's the Omen Gaming Hub. So from here, we can get a little bit of information about the PC itself, or CPU temps, GPU temps. We also have lighting control. So from here, we can change that front panel. Uh, just select that. We'll go purple, back, blue, so we can change the RGB on this thing. And finally, what I'd say is kind of important, given that we have that smaller CPU cooler, is the fan control. We have quiet, normal, and turbo. And obviously, when we click on turbo, everything's going to get a little bit louder, especially when you're gaming, but it does keep this system a lot cooler than if it was set to quiet or normal. If you're doing an extended gaming session, I would definitely recommend turning on turbo, but with all of the tests that I've run in this video, I've left it on normal and I have not hit thermal throttle. I was really surprised to see this. 
When set to normal, the temps while gaming were a bit higher than I'd like to see. We averaged around 75 to 76 degrees Celsius across all of the tests, but in games like Fortnite and Doom Eternal, I did see it jump up to 80 degrees Celsius and then come right back down because even in normal mode, when you hit those temps, these fans do kick up and try to keep the system as cool as possible. But when it comes down to it, if you're doing an extended gaming session, I would definitely turn on turbo mode here. So the first thing I always like to do with these systems is run a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 with a single core of 1267, multi 7208. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score on this, 45,076. Next up, we have Firestrike, 14,471. And finally, Time Spy, 6,211. So yeah, these scores aren't bad at all, and there's no overclocking going on with the GPU at all. But now it's time to see how this thing really performs. So first up, we have CSGO, 1080p, very high settings. I got an average of 267 FPS with this one. I knew it was going to run it very well. Next up, GTA 5 with a mix of very high and high settings. We got an average of 118 FPS. Looks amazing like this, and it's fully playable. Fortnite 1080p epic settings with the DirectX 11 backend, 100% resolution scale. We got an average of 87 FPS. I was actually expecting a little more out of this one. Next on the list, one of my favorite games of all time. This is Skyrim, the special edition version. Ultra settings, I mean, everything's maxed out here, 1080p, and it's running at a constant 60. Doom Eternal 1080p Ultra Settings 100% Resolution Scale, I averaged 112 FPS. This looks great here and it's playing absolutely amazingly. Overwatch 1080p Ultra Settings, we got an average of 132 FPS. If you want to get 144 out of this or over 144, just drop it down to high near golden. Here's Genshin Impact 1080p Ultra Settings, and we're right there at 60. I mean, it's locked at 30 or 60. We've set this to 60. Every once in a while, I do see it drop down to around 58, but overall, it is fully playable like this. I also ran the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark. High settings, 1080p. Pretty decent performance here. Coming in with a minimum of 44. Maximum of 119 and an average of 92. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. Just using the medium preset, 1080p, 100% resolution scale. By the end of this run here, in my afterburner results, we had an average of 64 FPS. I did see it drop down to around 60 every once in a while, but still, I think we're getting some decent performance here given how hard this game is to really run on higher end systems. So we're getting some pretty decent performance with PC games, but what about emulation? First up, we have Wii U using the SimU emulator, upscaled to 2K resolution with Breath of the Wild, using the Vulcan backend with async shaders, getting really great performance here. Every once in a while, it will dip down to around 58, and I did try this at 4K, but it ran at around 56 continuously. So 2K is the sweet spot for this, or if you just wanna lock it at 30, it will do it at 4K 30. And finally here, we have PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, upscaled to 2K. This is Skate 3, one of the harder ones to emulate, and we're at a constant 60. I mean, performance here is amazing. And going into this with that 10th Gen i7 with those 8 cores and 16 threads, I had a good feeling it would run it at full speed. So overall, I'm getting great performance out of this machine. Of course, there are some things that I would love to see changed from the factory, like including dual channel RAM instead of a single stick and a beefier CPU cooler. 
Temps were a little higher than I would like while I was gaming, but I never hit thermal throttle. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. If you max out all eight cores and 16 threads on this thing for an extended period of time with that smaller cooler, especially with the fan profile set to normal, you could hit that throttle limit. And even if you had this set to turbo, over time it would still hit that limit, but under everyday normal use in gaming, it was totally fine. Now the big question is, is it worth picking up a pre-built like this for around $1,049 or taking that money and building a custom PC with similar specs? So I just came up with this little list here to see if it would be worth it or not. So we got that i7, cheaper motherboard, 16 gigabytes of RAM. This will be dual channel RAM, a 256 gigabyte M.2, one terabyte hard drive, and a super cheap case and 400 watt power supply for 55 bucks. Total cost on all of those parts, $555, but we still haven't added a GPU, and prices are really crazy right now. So I went over to eBay to find the cheapest Buy It Now GTX 1660 Super that I could find, and it was $515. So factoring all of this in to build something with similar specs right now, but a really cheap case and power supply, would cost $1,070. But keep in mind, these pre-builts do come with a legitimate Windows 10 license and a warranty. So at the time of making this video, if you wanted to build something with the same specs that this pre-built has, it will cost you more to do a custom build. And another thing to keep in mind is, this part list is kind of the cheapest of the cheap that I could find on Amazon and eBay, especially that case and power supply. It's a Rosewell case with an included 400 watt power supply and it's very plain Jane. So yeah, in the end, if you wanted to build a PC with the same specs that we saw with this pre-built here, it's going to cost you a little more. And it's just really crazy that it's like that right now, but it comes down to GPU prices. I think the best thing we can do right now is kind of wait it out. I recently did a much cheaper build using an AMD APU, and you can build something like that and start gaming right now for around $550, and you'll get some decent performance out of it. And later on, when prices come down, you can just take something like this 1660 Super that we saw in this video, slap it in that machine, and get really great performance. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I will have one more video coming up with this Omen pre-built. I'm going to add dual channel RAM. We're going to do a little bit of GPU overclocking. And although we can't overclock the CPU in this machine, we can use Intel's extreme tuning utility to get a longer boost out of it and see if we can up performance that way. So if there's any other PC games you want to see tested in that video, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in picking up a decent pre-built right now, I'll leave some links in the description. But like always, Thanks for watching.